Now, the type of endpoint, this is actually something internal to the framework, but I just want to point it out because we're, these are enterprise integration pattern names. These are actually the components that are going to be created to wrap your handler. So the way to look at it is that you've got a channel, and then we have one of these two, depending on what type of channel it is. If it's a buffering channel, it's going to be a polling consumer. If it's a, a channel that you can subscribe directly to because it's uh, either within transaction, transactional, or has its own dispatcher, then it's going to be an event-driven consumer. And these are actually parts of the framework that correspond roughly to the message listener container in the JNS model. This is the component that subscribes to the channel on your behalf and then invokes your handler. The handler would be an implementation of one of the enterprise integration patterns. So we saw service activator. That would be one type of handler that can be inside this container, referenced by the container. We also have transformers, filters, routers, splitters, and aggregators, uh, as well as a, a number of other components. And these, these are kind of the high-level components. So we have different implementations of transformer as well. But this would be a generic transformer that you can reference at POJO. The difference, when you use one of these components, you're going to have a different namespace element name, and it's going to be playing a different role. So for instance, a filter is going to invoke something that returns a Boolean value whether or not to send the message. A router is going to uh, invoke something that returns a channel or a channel name so that you know where to send the message next, or maybe a collection of channel names if you want to send to more than one. Splitter and aggregator then break up a message into multiple messages and then reassemble them um, respectively. So here we see a filter. It's using a spell expression instead of ref and method. These are two different options. You can either point to a POJO or evaluate an expression. If it's something this simple, then we recommend just using an expression. At the bottom, you see that a method can actually be invoked where the parameters to that method are bound from the message contents, either payload or header, and then evaluating a spell expression relative to that payload instance or header instance. And then we also have Groovy support. This would be a third alternative, either ref plus method, expression, or a Groovy script. And in this case, it's going to be a dynamic Groovy script that um, can be refreshed every 30 seconds if it's been modified uh, since the last 30 seconds when you invoked it last. At the bottom, you see the script itself. It's very simple. Um, we bind the payload and the headers into the script, and you don't have to implement any interfaces or make it look more like Java. You can literally have a script that's this simple. We tend to think of this as kind of the middle ground between spell expressions and POJOs, and also adding the dynamics to it. We have a number of different adapters. Um, obviously, the, the messaging layers, JMS and MQP, um, within Spring Integration 2.0, we've added TCP and UDP support if you want to go at the more lower level of the spectrum. We also have um, a full selection of file transfer support, inbound and outbound. We have RSS feed reading. Um, for web services, we support REST, inbound and outbound, as well as SOAP or plain XML uh, web services using the Spring Web Services Library under the covers. In mail, we have inbound and outbound as well, covering both POP and IMAP on the inbound side. And we've added in Spring Integration 2.0, JDBC, XMPP, and Twitter. We even have an adapter that integrates with Spring application events so that you can have the global firing of events that I mentioned earlier, but then channel that into a single message channel and then manage your subscribers more uh, concretely, maybe with filtering and routing in front of that without having to write that in your code. So we're going to just look. All of these adapters are, are going to be similar when you configure them. If it's a polling adapter, like the file version you see here, then it will have a polar sub-element. If it's not a polling adapter, if it's event-driven, then you won't see that sub-element. Uh, but the important thing is that everything downstream from it will be event-driven. Um, whatever's subscribed to the from file channel is going to receive these file instances as if they were being um, fired into the system uh, without any polling involved. So all that code I showed earlier with lifecycle and polling and scheduling, that stuff is used by Spring Integration internally so that you don't have to. And you see there's an example of a JMS outbound adapter here, which would be just a one-way fire and forget. Um, we also have a JMS outbound gateway, which does request reply. And it would look sort of like this HTTP outbound gateway, except with the destination name. Here what we have is the outbound gateway. It builds on top of REST template. It uses Spring's URI placeholders. So you can see here that we're going to evaluate 
the zip code by executing a spell expression against the message, and then replace that in the URI, and then invoke the request. Get the response and send it to the, the um, next channel. The WS outbound gateway is using a SOAP request, um, and it's also delegating to the Jaxby marshaller to create that payload. We have a number of XML uh, components. With XPath, we can do routing as well as splitting a message based on some node name. Uh, we can do transformation, where maybe you just want to grab the contents of a particular node and that becomes the payload of your message. Um, we can do header enrichment so that certain values from the XML go into the header and others go into the payload. There's an XSLT transformer as well, which is um, pretty self-explanatory. All of these are, are configurable through the namespace where you would just provide the XPath expression and give it an input-output channel or provide the XSLT uh, reference and give it an input-output channel. The OXM versions delegate to marshaller implementations and unmarshallers, uh, and we have out of the box everything that's supported in the Spring OXM library, which is what these build upon. So you've got Jaxby support, Caster, JibX, and so on. And um, I'm not going to go into much detail on how we integrate with all these other projects. You've seen a little bit of it already. We build channel adapters on top of the Spring AMQP template that look very much like our JMS adapters that are built on top of the JMS template. There's um, one thing I do want to mention here is that the Spring Batch project works really well with Spring integration, where you want to do some fine-grained task like reading every entry from a file and processing those and writing them to a database. That's a batch job, but you can kick that job off with a message being sent to a channel, invoking a Spring Batch launcher. And you can receive the execution completion of that batch job as a message as well, and maybe send an email. So those two systems work really well together. We're also building a Roo add-on, and that's going to um, allow you to work at a much higher level to, build, to flush out all of the components that you want in your application with something like scatter gather and it will create the splitter or the publish subscribe channel and the aggregator downstream and we have spring tool suite support which is what you see on this slide spring tool suite support is um, using these icons to represent the different channels and adapters and components and it has different palettes on the left hand side those are driven by the namespace that you've added so within sts there's actually a namespace tab, as you can see at the bottom, the second tab from the left. And within there, you can, you can select that you want to add the JMS adapters or the HTTP adapters, and you'll automatically get a new palette on the left-hand side here. It gives you the icons for those adapters. Um, it's fully round-trippable. If you click on the source tab, then you'll see the XML. You can modify that, and it will update the graph. If you go to the graph and drag and drop, then you go back to the source tab, you'll see that change immediately in the XML. They're both interoperating with the same underlying metadata model. 